Hi there, my name is Kevin, and if you don't already know, or if you're new here to this channel, I primarily teach people HTML and CSS with a really big focus on CSS. This week's video is going to be a little bit different though because the team at Webflow got in touch with me and they asked if I'd be willing to take a look at their platform and do a video on their platform and how it works and my experience with it. So we talked a little bit and I asked them, could I do a video that's just my honest first impression of using Webflow? And they said, yes, just go ahead, use it and let people know what you think about it. So they are sponsoring this video, but there's literally no strings attached. So a really big thank you to Webflow for sponsoring this and helping some support this channel and of course to be brave enough to let me just dive in there and give my honest opinion of what I think of the platform. Now maybe you've never heard of Webflow and if that's the case it's one of those visual editors and visual editors usually get a bit of a bad rap and I think with good reason to be honest. Uh, they often there's issues with them whether it's limitations or just creating some they're usually really limited in what you can do with them and I've used a few of them for people that are complete beginners they need a really simple website they're probably good enough but I've heard a lot of good things with Webflow I even know a few designers who have made some really good things on Webflow so I was going in with an open mind on this one the main idea with this is I have a design here it is here is the design that I want to create I want to see if I can create that design without too much trouble not having any experience with the platform but I also want to explore animation through Webflow because I've heard a lot of nice things about the animation possibilities or feature, I guess, is a better thing. Um, so apparently it's really easy to make animation. So I want to add in a simple animation somewhere in there. I'm just going to play around and add something simple in for now just to see how the animation side of things works in Webflow because, again, I've heard good things. And another cool thing I've heard about is the code export. And I've heard really good things about the code export. So I definitely want to check it out and see how good of a job it actually does. So we're going to build out the site. We're going to add a little bit of animation and at the very end we'll do a code export and look at the code that it gives us and explore it a little bit to see how good it actually is. So this really is my first time using Webflow. I've never used it before or I used it for about a minute and a half where I made a project that I just looked at how the structure of it was and then I started one where I put, you're going to see it, I did like one little test just to make sure I could figure out how things worked in it a little bit before starting this video. Uh, but it literally was about 30 seconds. Uh, I haven't watched any tutorials. I haven't watched any videos on how it works. I, it's literally my first time going in. Let's see how I did with it. All right, so here we are on Webflow's homepage and let's go into my dashboard and we're gonna see in here, I don't have very much. All right, so let's get logged in and you can see I've done two things. I have my wondrous project here, which was just a template that I opened up to take a look at. I really have nothing at all going on in here whatsoever. It's just the default template because I was poking around to see just a little bit of how things looked and then the next thing i did was i made the kevin's coffee house and come and take a look there's not very much here at all uh so i literally have not touched webflow at all except for making this uh what we can do so let's see what we're going to be doing you might recognize this from another video and this is what i'm going to try and make i have literally no idea how to do it at all so it should be interesting so i do know we can add stuff here so let's click on that and see a section container grid columns uh, there are the basic error. So that's my layout stuff that's there. Oh, we also have divs, lists. All right, all the stuff we might need. Typography, CMS, that's kind of cool. Media, so that's my images, my videos, my forms. That's good because we do want to build a form. And then just components, drop down, uh, background video. Oh, cool, we can do a background video. Navbar, aha, that's what I want. Um, so let's grab my navbar and drop it up there. Oh, look at that, it gives me everything I need. So I have brand, does that... Show more. It's my nav bar, it's in a container, and the link is my brand. Brand link. I'm not sure what that means. <laughs> That's all right. Uh, in there, I do want to insert an image. So do I need to come to here and let's just try image. And this, I actually want to see if I'm going to be able to, oh, I have to drop files. I didn't know that. Um, I want to be able to see if I can bring an SVG in or not. I'm assuming you can. Amazing, you can bring SVGs in. Um, I do want to push that off the top a little bit. So let's grab my nav bar, layout, drew, 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 spacing. That's margin. That'd be kind of cool if it was a little bit bigger. And I want to click, how do I? It's not moving. Oh, you drag up and down. Uh, I guess that makes sense because I'm increasing my, okay. What about these numbers? 
that's left and right. Okay, that's sort of what I'm used to. Um, all the Adobe software, usually it's just no matter what, if I'm increasing a number, it's to the right. If I'm decreasing a number, it's to the left. But in this case, it's up and down that way. Uh, so we'll do that and we'll increase some space. Oh, whoops. Probably want some space. I'll leave that at zero for now. Oh, cool. If you click, you get a little thing pop up. Uh, these guys, I'm wondering, I know they have stuff here. I don't want a uh, display. What's this mean? Flex, what's this? Block? Block. I want to display flex, but I want direction. Oh, they do horizontal, vertical. Ah, you don't even need... Why is that not... Oh, wait, here we go. I want... Do I have any margins? Hmm, we've run into our first problem, but oh, you know what? Maybe it's because... I'm going to undo. Can I undo? Undo. Go back. They seem to have broken things. Oh, there we go. Maybe it's already... My container, I was doing it on my nav bar. I don't want to do that on my nav bar because we're inside a container, right? And my container, how are these getting separated? I feel like I'm missing something because <laughs> I wanted to do a display flex for this whole area. And I'm wondering, I don't want to have to add a new selector or tag on that, but how can I select these? Okay, we're going to come back to that once. I, I, I don't want to be stuck too long on certain things. Wait, what's this? Display inline block. That's fine. Inline. Oh, we can do grid. Flex. Or what if I did it as a display flex instead? Oh, it's only doing that one though. Undo. Okay, so let's select a class of We'll make a new class then. My nav link. So this will also be a nav link, and this one can also be a nav link. Okay, I have that. I'm I'm just thinking I, I can add space on top of those, but I don't want to do that. Okay, I'm going to come back to here. Um, I also I forgot I brought my fonts into Webflow, but I haven't done it yet. But let's get rid of this background color. I'm just going to make it transparent. That's nice and easy. Um, so I brought the fonts I want. I don't know how to use those fonts yet. So I want to do that on my body. So body. Oh, I'm on my body now. Let's go in typography. My font size, my default's going to be 18. Family. So uh, let's go to add fonts and see if it's here. Oh, so I brought in my Adobe font API, but I hadn't told it which uh, one I wanted to be set up on. So it was going to be Webflow test. There we go. Uh, so we just save that and I guess we can go back. Oh, that was in its own little thing there. So I wonder, it said sometimes it could take a while. Okay, I'm gonna give it a bit of time. I might have to refresh this after to get the, the fonts in. Uh, so we can keep going. So the next thing I wanna do is I wanna add a new section. So let's bring in a section. I'm just gonna drop it right there. So when you do that, you can see actually, let's just undo that. That's kind of interesting. When I when I do that, I get my section. It's telling me that it's going into the body. Oh, nav menu. How do I get to there? That thing I just saw pop up there. I want that. <laughs> Style manager. Okay, that's cool. There was like a nav that I can't select. Hmm. We're gonna we're gonna dive deeper into that, but let's keep going for now. Uh, so here I have my section. Let's go see what I want my section to look like. I have this text, so I might as well copy that right away. And then I need to have a big picture in the background of it, and that actually has to over overlap with some other content. Um, so I guess the first thing I'm gonna put in here is some text, text blocks, heading. Drop that. The heading will be. Should I put a container in? I don't really think I need a container. So we'll paste that and uh, serving, soft break. Uh, da -da -da. So this one, I want it to be bold. This one, I want it to be not bold. Why did it do that? Okay, um, so I have that, the color of it. Let's go get the color. Actually, I have to change my body's color too. The body text, I have it as this one, which I didn't even add to my colors there. Uh, so we have that for my body. So let's go. I'm a little bit all over the place, but it's a little bit how I design things anyway. Uh, styles were on my body. Color. Oh, it's pretty close. Okay. And then my heading, this heading is going to be different. So actually, that let's give this 
selector heading. Let's give it a class, new class, new combo class. Type to create a new combo class. Ooh, that's fancy sounding combo class. Uh, the combo class will be main title. Do I need to put a dot? What if I don't put a dot? Rename class main title. Let's see if that works. I don't think I need to put dots, which is weird to me. <laughs> um, so I want it to be normal. Let's do where my fonts come in. Uh, uh, I'm just going to save. No, I'm not. Let's, let's stick to there. That's my combo. Can I just style this rename class duplicate class? Because I made that a combo, but I just realized I don't really want it to. Be oh, it's okay. Uh, the font size. That's just size. Typography. Ah, that's cool. You can go into M's and... Oh, they don't have rems. That's interesting. Very interesting. M? <laughs> Is that the line height? I just put that to one. You can't. Okay. Uh, and the font size... Actually, I'm try. I see that it's there for now. I'm gonna stick with pixels because I know how big I want it to be. <laughs> and actually, I need a span. Can I put a span on that? F clear formatting, wrap with span. Oh, that was easy. Text span. Uh, what's my selector though? Is my text? Let's just try making that one bold now. No, see, I don't want to do that. I only want to select my span. Ah, there we go. Uh, let's call this. Title, span. This way, I'm not too focused on making it perfect. We'll just make it bold for now. And actually, I think this font size is supposed to be bigger. Let's do like 60. And then this one we can do at a 72. Cool. That was actually pretty easy to do. Uh, this section, I am going to give p spacing. Spacing's always margin. What's under size? What's under position? How do I add padding on something? Centering. Oh, cool. There's a quick centering. Yeah, that's okay. Oh, that's act. Oh, it doesn't. Don't we wish we had that in CSS? Centering doesn't affect elements without a fixed width. They need that warning in the dev tools <laughs> of, of stuff. That's that's neat. Okay, let's just put that back to zero, though. I was looking for padding. It's right in front of me. Um, I don't really know if I need it to be padding, but I am going to. Um, bring increase the padding and this is sort of the opposite of this if i want more margin i have to click and drag up because i'm increasing the space on top i guess and if i want more margin uh, sorry more padding i drag down i find that a little bit unintuitive but i can see you getting used to it and so i want to increase that one so i'm dragging up interesting okay and how do i add a background to this backgrounds color image How do I bring, oh, choose image. Okay, that's not what we want that to look like at all. The width, can I set this to cover? Auto? Cover, that's what we want. Position, we'll just do a center center. Oh, that's nice, I like the little visual thing. I could even use this to like teach CSS and how stuff works, uh, to be honest. That's kind of cool that it shows the arrows and the way it's growing. And that means over here, uh, actually I want it to be more like that. And let's go back up into my spacing and I just need like a ton. No, why are they linking? I only want this one. Can I not go bigger than 200? 500. I'm wondering even, I, I, I'm doing this as like a gig, I don't like doing things like this. <laughs> uh, it doesn't, anyway, we're going to make it work and then we're going to try and do it in a better way. <laughs> uh, but we're going to start with this and that's just, there we go. That's too much. Okay. So we got that there. Um, I don't know if I'm saving, I'm assuming it's saving as I'm going, oh wait, I just saw nav, nav menu. There we go. I hope you can see these things. That is, okay. So, oops, I don't, I want my nav menu that i want to be display flex right because then oh but that's not going to work oh that will it will no it won't work okay you know what i'm going to do i'm i'm going to do this is going to be my n header container 
Uh, the reason I want to do that with my header container here is because I do want this to be display flex. It's going to break it, but the advantage there, like if I undo that, you'll see it's aligned to the top. By doing display flex now, it's lining that up centered this way, and then I should be able to do this, 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 this. What's this one called? Space between should put... Why am I getting space on the ends? Hmm. Okay, I'm going to leave it like that for now because I don't want to... I can go all the way that way. All the way that way. That one should... This should be putting all the space in the middle as far as I'm concerned. Hmm. Okay, we're going to stick with that for now. We're going to keep going. Uh, I want to add a new section down here at the bottom. Section elements cannot be nested inside each other. I'm not trying to. I want to nest it. There we go. In the body. Did that work? Oh, I can do it here. Cool. This is the thing I wanted to bring up before. So I have my section. After that section, I want a new section. It didn't let me do it. I don't want to nest it. I want to nest it after. Oh, here. Let's just select my body and then go plus. And instead of clicking and dragging, I'm just going to click on it. Haha. -ha, there we go. Okay, cool. Um, and so let's go look back at XD for a second. For that, I, now I want to bring in this stuff here. So I'm going to need two divs, a display flex, I guess. Um, yeah, we'll try something like that. So I have my section. I need to add in container. Yeah, I'm going to put in a container. Oh, wait, do I need... What's the columns? Let's just not put in the container for a second. If I do columns now... Okay, they are full width. Okay, so I want to go inside of that. And then I want a container, and then inside that container, columns. What are the columns? I want two columns, six and six. Let's do like a eight and four, I guess. Eight and four looks, that sounds good. So, uh, oh, can I not show all settings? Ha, I can drag it. Eight and four, uh, seven and five. Ah, cool. I don't even know what happened there, but okay. Oh, so you can do ID for in-page linking. I like that. Uh, and you can add, it's only a div tag right now, and I'm guessing I can add other stuff. You can see I can do custom attributes. Interesting. And then I can choose where, so on a tablet. Oh, so it's going to be like this on a tablet and on desktop, but on the phone and everything else, they're just going to stack, which is fine. Um, I'm going to come back and add worry about that stuff after. So this one here, column one, I would want to go back to my design. It should have a border. Typography borders, a pretty thick border. I can't, oh, it's border radius, whoops. Border style, solid. I don't know, we'll start, try with 10. Oh, I have no content in there. So in that column, let's add in my text right away. So I need a heading, it's an H2 and choose heading type h2 and then after my heading I need to have a text block can I copy and paste things from here I don't think so I eh? oh I can cool because I need two of you there we go and let's go get my text from xd cool so now we can take that uh, I guess I can change the color of that I can can I create a color palette I can except I don't cancel. Let's get my color first. So we're gonna go with this one. So if I bring that color here and then I add it, there we go, uh, dark slight gray, that sounds good to me. Create. And so there's my color. I want some padding on this. Padding on you. Column padding. Let's go with like 35. Can I do all of them at once or can I not link them? No way. Maybe there's a way to link it that I'm missing right now. Okay, dokie. And then here I want my image. So what I actually want to do now is I want these columns. What's the display on my columns? I want display flex. Was it using floats automatically or something by default? I'm curious. I want to display flex because I want these to be lined up this way. So that one ends up in the middle. Then in here I will place my image. There we go. And my image, let's choose my image. <laughs> cool, you can get little previews. Uh, I want to upload a new image though. I want this one. Now, this is where I'm curious because this is going to be the wrong format for my image. And this is, I wanted to see, here we go. 
Uh, oh, I can do alt, my alt. Uh, pouring a coffee. I should come up with a better one. Ooh, my image, it's giving me a warning that the file is too big, so I could consider replacing it with a smaller image. That's cool. Um, let's go to all settings on this, because I'm really curious how, what happens if I change the width here to like 70%? No, not the width. I'm going to leave that at auto. Height, 70%. What happens? Did I just break something? Oh, I hit tab and it, 70, oh, I can only do pixels. And if I do like 500, yeah, it stretches it. That's what I was a little bit worried about. Um, so I will have to edit this image, I think. I was just trying to see if there was like a background fit option. There doesn't, I, I wasn't expecting there to be, but I said, you never know. Um, okay, so I'm actually gonna leave that like that for the moment. And I'm actually gonna select that whole column and see, can I, oh, the column I can't move. Why? Aha, because they want it to remain responsive. That's smart of them. That is smart of them. Um, so I'm gonna re-export this image after, but in the meantime, let me just think here for a second. This has a box, they both have shadows. This has a bit thicker of a shadow. I do want to pull them on top, but I can't do negative padding, which is why they don't want me to do it. I get that. Uh, can I do a position? I can do that. Okay, so I could overlap this way. And I guess actually on this, then I need a bit more padding. Can I click and drag. There we go. Let's do something like that. Um, for my image box shadow let's add a new shadow the angle's okay the distance oh that's blur can be a little blurrier and the size can i go back to zero on that and the color there we go we can just really tone that down a little bit one thing i'm curious about can i add i want to sort of make that a bit blurrier it's, you can probably barely see it. Um, what I want to know is, can I add? You can. Cool, you can actually have multiple shadows. That is great. I love that. Um, it's a nice way to create extra depth or create more realistic shadows when you have multiple shadows going on. Uh, one that's smaller than the last one type of thing. That shadow is way too much, though. <laughs> now, if I have a shadow I want to get rid of, what happens? Trash. And as you can see, uh, so I just brought in and replaced it with um, an image, the other image, uh, basically. So, okay, that's cool. So that's working. Now I want to move this whole section up. And can I do that easily with some negative margins? That's sort of the first thing I would think of doing. Will it let me do it negatively? Aha, we can. Cool. Oh, and that means this needs a white background. But that's cool. That was easy. And... So this is one of those things with these types of editors that sort of drives me nuts at first is just like I'm looking for stuff when if I was doing the CSS, I'd actually know what it is, but it's I'm getting there. I'm getting there. I'm starting to get used to how things are now. Let's just see for fun. It's still working. It'll not looking so good. And now it's terrible. <laughs> okay, we'll have to fix that. We're not quite responsive yet, but I'm really I'm not stressing too much about that uh, at the moment. The next part, okay, we need a little form here. Never miss out on our special offers. We need a blue background. Let's see if we can do that now. So I need a, select my body. I need to go up and choose another section. This section will have a background that is a new color because it will be this really dark color here. Uh, cancel, let's put the color in first and then hit plus and it dark slate gray. This is what really dark blue. I guess the other one wasn't slate gray either, but we'll create that. Really dark blue. Uh, we're going to bring in our uh, container first. So we need our container. Then we need to have our heading. And then we need to have our text. And this seems really repetitive, but you have to think when you're doing CSS, of course, it is as well. Um, I don't like that I can't scroll past the bottom of my page, even though I know that's super realistic. Uh, so I want to come on here and I want to change the color here to white just for now. Cool. So it's all inherited just like you'd expect it to be. Uh, so I should be working here too. I can center. I do want to add a bit of spacing on the top. 
that's cool. Uh, I'm going to add some spacing on the bottom right away, just so I can... Oops, wrong way. We want the spacing to go that way, just so I can scroll down. <laughs> I don't like it being stuck on the bottom, like I said. Uh, of course, on this, we're going to want some padding as well. So the padding, we'll just do it like that, 57. I'm, I'm doing this really rough. I'm not trying to make a perfect layout right now. Uh, there's also margins on the top there, and there's no margin apparently on the bottom of this text box. Where's that? Huh. They have no margin on their paragraphs. That's really interesting. I had multiple paragraphs in here too, but that's okay. Uh, the next thing, after you, I want to have a form field, I think. Didn't I do that right away? All right, so this is where I'm getting a bit more curious about how this is going to work. So for this, I want an input. Oh, I need a form first. Haha, -ha, smart. I do need a form first. So I need a form block, which I don't want a name. No, I just want email address. So I can delete you and I can delete you. I want to select my form. I want to give you a width. Now, actually, on, this is something I'm really curious about. Does it have position, size, width, height, min width, math width? Aha, that's what I was looking for. So I want a max width of like 600 pixels. Um, I want it to spacing. I want my margins to be auto on the left and the right. Oh, I should have just hit that guy. There we go. So that's centered that way. We can add a little bit of margin on the top. Something like that. Um, in my design, oh, I didn't even put email address. I didn't put a label anywhere. We're gonna keep email address there then. Um, I also wanted to see if I could add a placeholder on this, which would probably be on the settings. Placeholder, enter your email address. Oh, that's super easy. Okay, cool. Now what I think might be a little bit trickier, um, I want to wrap this in this so I'm going to go in my form. I'm going to add a div. Let's see if this works. Because this is how I'd probably do it. And I want to bring that in my div. And I also want my text field here to be in that same div. Okay, so that worked. Now this div block will be my uh, CTA. No, I don't want an ID on there. I want a class on this. How do I add a class? Form, form block. How do I add a class? Design. Aha, okay. Uh, CTA. Now, am I adding classes or am I adding tags? If it works, it works, I guess. Uh, something I'll have to look into. CTA, I'm really like not on top of it. <laughs> CTA columns, I'm fighting a cold. My brain is not working. Um, so CTA columns, I want to display flex. Cool. And... Hmm. Submit button has no spacing on it. This has no spacing on it. What could it be? Oh, that's I was centering it when I should have probably been just doing an aligned top. And look at that. Uh, now, at the same time, they are lined up. But I want to, like, if we go and look at my actual design, um, I want to add a bit more padding. to. Obviously, the fonts need to change and stuff, but I'm less worried about that. But let's just see. Spacing, I had a bit more padding on that. So actually for this one, I'm going to do like 35, 35. And I want my typography now to be, oh, I, I just saw that it says flex child here. So then it gives you like certain shrink if needed, grow if possible. That's kind of cool. Alignment and order. Huh, really neat. You get the flex property show up when it's a flex child. I like that. Uh, flex item, I would... Uh, it makes They're using language here that's a lot more friendly to people who don't know CSS. So I think that is a good thing. Um, so that's okay. Where's my typography, though? Typography. Style. More type options. All caps. Boom. That was easy. Uh, letter spacing. We could always play with that. Text indent columns. Oh, cool. You can do columns in here. The right to left, left to right. Breaking is normal. You can do a no wrap. And, oh, wow. That's really, they have a lot of options in here. And text shadows. Cool, cool, cool. 
Um, can I change anything in here? Right, well, it's probably okay. I'm going to leave it just like that. We're going to come back through and do some typography stuff in a bit. Actually, let's just check now. Body, typography. I mean, it's so cool. <laughs> you just see the whole thing change by scrolling over stuff. Feels like Illustrator a bit for that. I have Roboto coming in. Where's the other font that I brought in? Oh, look at that. I have it. Okay, so Roboto I used for most. My headings all want... I want to choose all my headings. Can I choose all my headings really easily? Like, this is my heading. Whoa, what did... Did I do that to my whole heading? <laughs> I thought I was working on my section. I made my heading gigantic. Whoops. That's okay though. Uh, so that heading, I want just my heading though. Can I choose just heading or what if I choose you? Oh, I get it. I get it. H1. I'm not actually, I don't get it. All H2 headings. Do I have another? Oh, we have hover stuff in there too. Cool. Uh, okay. So it doesn't seem to be that I can just choose all headings. Okay, so let's just choose you then. I'm going to set that to Attrapment Web. I'm going to choose you, and then I'm going to say all H2 headings should be size 48. The font should be Attrapment, and the color should be an orange color that I haven't brought in yet. Um, actually, should all of them be that color? Yeah, they should be, and then we'll have some that change that out. Oh. Uh, hmm. I don't want them to be bold. So, do, 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 heading. They should all be my normal. It's only changing that one. I want to change all of them. All H2 headings should be normal. Aha. Uh, the color of them all should be that, which I can also add chocolate. Let's just call it orange. Um, great. I do want a little bit more line height on this, 36. I won't want that. I'm going to put it to you and make it like 1.1. Cool. And we're going to add, I had a lot of space on that, but I think I'm going to make it like this. I know a bit of what I need to do. I'm starting to get the hang of this. Okay. Here, even the color of my heading, I really muck that up by putting the background color, uh, the background image and everything on my H1. <laughs> That's a, one way to do a site. Uh, okay. So that looks okay here. What's, Oh, it's a heading one. Whoops. I want that to be a heading two. But this one will be my CTA heading. So my CTA heading will be white. This. Oh, actually, no. This should actually be like a really... I'm going to just... It should be like a really light blue like that. Let's add that color. Sky blue. That's fine. This button here should actually be... That's my submit button. The color white is good. Where's my background color? That should be my orange. Oh, things start coming together pretty quick once that orange doesn't look right. I need to edit that orange color. We'll see if I can do that after. Um, let's just give you size max width. And I guess that means we need to center you. Super duper. Uh, I'm going to make that a little bigger, 700. All right, so now we're going to do one thing that I was sort of looking forward to do, and I don't, here it is. Um, I want to bring in a Twitter feed, not a Twitter feed, an Instagram. I can do Twitter and Facebook, but I can't do Instagram. I'm sure I saw something on that. All right, so it turns out you can't just do Instagram through here. I, I didn't look into it, but I did find a free plugin. I didn't even know there was things like plugins. Um, it's not really a plugin in this case. It's an embed code that I have to put. So the embed code will come all the way down to here. In my body. It's going to let me do it. Come on, come on, come on. There we go. And I got this code right here. So let's save and close and see what happens. Ah, oh, we can't see it yet. So when all is said and done, it should look something like this. Um, I can see I haven't been on Instagram in a while. I didn't make a coffee one just for this either. Um, so anyway, we'll see if it what it looks like once it's all said and done. So except I don't want that to be here. I want that to be here. Can I click and drag there? Can I click and drag here? Drop. There we go. That's where I wanted it. So then this one is going to have a margin bottom of zero now. 
Uh, okay, so we have this. I I want to. I'm gonna skip over the blog post thing. Um, it might be something I look at in the future. I do off off camera and come back to afterward, um, just because I want to try building out that more complex part of my site that I had next. Um, so for that next thing, once again, we're gonna have a section. Inside that section, I'm going to put in a container, and inside my container, I am going to put columns. The columns. Oh, we can do it right here. Are gonna be like a two and ten. Three, I think. There we go. I think that'd be good. This column, can I just style this? That's kind of cool if I can just straight up style it. Uh, color, I want a background. Border, opacity, effects. See, this is this is the background. There it is. One of those things, once again, that once I get used to it, it's not so bad. But it sometimes takes me a while to, f you know, when you're scrolling up and down trying to find what you're looking for. Uh, I want to add, no, I don't want to do that there. I want to go to my whole section. We can add some margin top. So again, I'm going to add some margin bottom that I might get rid of later on, just so I can scroll down and keep it off the bottom of my screen for the moment. Uh, so inside this section, I do have all that text to bring in. So I think I'm going to speed this part up. I just saw I was adding text blocks and I also have paragraphs. And I have a little tooltip. a paragraph. Oh my goodness, I should have been using paragraphs this whole time. Oh well, uh, so that would probably make more sense and probably come with some default spacing on it and work a little bit better uh, than just doing this generic text block thing. Um, yeah, oh well, I guess I did that wrong. Um, in a way, this could sort of be a list, but anyway, let's just, I don't, I'm, I probably, I'm curious actually if I could style the list, I'm sure I could. Um, but for now, let's just do paragraph. And I guess I could do each one of these as their own paragraph. Um, and we're actually gonna see if I can copy paste something here. So Monday, so if I do something like that, um, I'm gonna give this a class of opening hours. Just realized there's a problem there. Um, opening hours, because opening hours is going to need some margin top on it to spread it out a little bit. And then this bold, and I want to actually wrap that in a span because I want that to be uh, a, that light blue color that I had. Ugh, I only want my span to be that color. Bold text. Opening hour, <laughs> do a bit of BEM here, uh, day. And then on my day, then I could switch this to be that light color. Now what I want to know, like can opening hours, can I take copy paste? Aha. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Cool. And then actually that I want to reduce now so it should do all of them at once. Ha! Huh, neat. Let's play with this now a little bit. The one thing I do wish, maybe there's a way to do it that I don't know, but I'd, I'd be nice if we could make just all of these automatically the same size. Because um, I do want to increase the padding a little bit on the two sides. And these columns, that whole column thing, let's once again do a flex so I can center this in the middle. And then this one will be my form. So actually before my form, I want to bring in my heading. And then inside my heading, after my heading, I want two lines. One will be a link and then I have my form. Uh, so it'd be an H2. get in touch and I just realized something. So let's come in here and this is, oh, that's my H2. So I wanna make sure I'm on all H2s because I do want to do a bit more in my typography, show more options. I want it to be all caps. I want there to be a little bit of letter spacing. And I do have to play with the line height a little bit. 36, let's just do 48. Or again, this is where I, I wish this would default there and then make that a one. There we go. So get in touch. After my get in touch, I wanna add a paragraph and add a paragraph. And if I wanna make that whole thing a link, it's a link. I don't need anything special. URL, I can do a URL. I can do a page page section, so yeah, that's like anchoring through the page. Oh, you have phone numbers, cool. Files, or in this case, an email. So I could do um, email is hello at kevinscoffeehouse.com and subject is 
uh, Kevin's Coffee House. Cool. Uh, and then after that, we want to bring in a form. So I am getting used to this a little bit now. So bring in my content form block first. Name, email address. I do, uh, I purposely wanted to do a subject here. So after this one, I want to bring in, uh, where's my forms? Forms, label, input, form block, checkbox, select. Because I'm very curious how we can style that up. And after my select, I also want to bring in a doo -doo -doo text area. Okay, I'm probably not going to format all of this. I do want to see here how much I can do to my select. Because selects are always a pain to style up. So my background color should be pure white. That looks good enough, actually. <laughs> uh, I guess we have to go to the setting. settings on this one. Uh, oh, required, allow, multi allow multiple, it's interesting. Select one, first choice, second choice. I'm going to leave those alone. Um, let's just say for fun though, actually. Let's come back to my design. The font is actually Roboto, is it? Cool, that's working, okay. Uh, I'm going to switch it to entrapment just because I want to test a few things on this <laughs> uh, for styling forms. Um, let's make it my orange color or blue. Let's change the color here to white of my text. Cool. Uh, just because I want to test a little bit here, let's say, can I make it bigger? I guess that would just be under size. Layout size. Can I give this just a bigger height, 300 PX? That didn't seem to do anything. Height, that is the height, right? 500 PX. Doesn't seem to be doing anything. Our text area is a little bit limited in that sense. Hmm. Curious. All right, and this one can get my See there, I wonder if there's a way, there's probably something I'm missing that can give me like some generic coloring and stuff like that. Um, and I guess for this column, I guess I could have actually made that like three columns, but we want to just, oh, see, look, these are linked. How do I do that where they're linked? They weren't always linked on other things. That's interesting. But okay, so we do something like that. Cool. And actually that went pretty fast. <laughs> These, again, should probably be switched to paragraphs just so they work a little better. Uh, that's going to come in. There's a little bit more I want to do here, but I'm. Uh, this was my first chance at just playing with this. Let's hit publish. I don't publish to selected domains. Let's see what happens here. I'm really curious. Let's open this up. That all loads. That looks pretty good. Oh, look at that. My inst oh, edit social feed. Is that because I'm logged in? Ah, uh, that's kind of annoying. Okay, <laughs> that's okay. Uh, I was just experimenting to see. So that's looking good. How is this? Lo wow, look at that. The whole thing is styled. Okay, so I just discovered something really cool uh, before I even did the thing I wanted to do. But the way the media queries work in this, I thought I was really limited uh, at first when, because what I was doing is I was shrinking to this size and then this size and it was making those weird columns. And what had happened is the columns were trying to do this, but because I'd set the whole thing to display flex, it was busting it. So you might remember I did a flex to center this way. So I'm like, I guess I have to go back to a display block. But what happened was that is saving it only at the screen size that I'm clicking here. And you can even adjust like the this thing to like get different views and stuff, which is cool. But you can use this to build in your media queries. So basically if you design something and then you change it when you're on one of these tabs, it's only changing it um, and it's really doing like a mobile first thing because if I changed it here, it's affecting any that and anything smaller. So that was kind of cool. A nice little discovery I made. So I think I've fixed up my site a little bit um, at smaller screen sizes. Uh, so the other thing I wanted to check out was um, the interactions and stuff like that. So element triggers and all of that I want to see. Um, I was also looking here. I didn't, you know, I, <laughs> I didn't explore it all. I just started building stuff. But this is what I was looking for before. I have the navigator uh, that was showing up on this side at one point. So just I should have explored things a little better before jumping in. But that's how we like to work, right? We, we learn by doing. Um, so I can easily find stuff here and move stuff around, which is kind of cool. Um, that would have been useful earlier on. On pin, 
collapse all cool um, that's the navigator if you need new pages if you need their cms you can get their cms stuff which uh, is something i might look at at another time e-commerce which is cool assets and settings now, i've seen some sort of I've heard about something um, that I can't really find right now. So I'm going to keep exploring to see if I can find. There's one thing um, that I want to see if I can figure out. But we're going to get there in a little bit. Let's see if we can add in a trigger here of a scroll. Well, scroll into view. On scroll. Action. Play scroll. No. Action. Trigger on. Let's do it on all of them. On action. Play scroll animation. 0% or when it starts and when it finishes and then the scroll animation smoothing. Let's add a new animation in. Scroll animation. Select an element on the canvas and then click the plus above to animate the element on scroll. I did that. Didn't I do that? Plus. Aha. Okay. Uh, we want it to... I want it to slide in. Can I do that? I have a skew, rotate, scale, size? No, move. Uh, I was looking for translate, move. So I want it to move. Can I just, whoa, that's not what I wanted. Oh no, undo, not at all what I wanted. Uh, move, oh, here we go. How do I do it? The move action does not have a value applied. Configure the action with at least one value. Ah, there we go. So I want this to be like super far off. Can I do that as a percentage? 100%. So let's say 150 should move. Er, want to be off screen, right? Uh, okay, whatever. Two, hmm. 100 VW. I know it's off screen. Uh, you're now only affecting the trigger element. I got it. So it moves to there. That's other movements that I don't want to do. Easing. Oh, wow, they have a lot of easing options here. So let's do an in-out quad. Let's see what that is. Uh, and then that's my zero. Then I want to go to here, and it should just be at my zero point. Zero. Live preview is on. So there we go. Ooh, OK, cool. So as I scroll, now it's hopefully, OK, we're going to have to play with this a little bit. So here. Live preview back on. Cool, and can I also at the same time, that's a move, but can I add other things too? I also wanna add an opacity, and here we'll do the same one, add opacity, except maybe this opacity could come in a little bit earlier. That one's gonna be okay, and here we'll just drag the opacity down to zero. Let's see a live preview. So it should fade in. And even, let's drag this. We're going to start that a little later. Uh, live preview. <laughs> cool. Okay, so let's see. I mean, it's a little tacky. Whoa, it's a little too much, I think. Um, but, you know, it could be kind of cool. Um, I just wanted to test because I heard the animations and stuff in here were really easy to do. And it looks like it is right. So let's publish that again. Publish. Let's go check it out. And let's start scrolling down. Oh, there's a bit of a problem. <laughs> okay, my move maybe was a bad idea, but it still worked really well. So there might be a better option uh, than move there, but you can see it is working really smoothly and really cool. I like the, um, the easing. Whoa, it's a little fast if you scroll fast. <laughs> okay, I'd have to play around with that a little bit. Okay, so I did a little bit more work and I made a few extra discoveries off screen just now. Uh, so I was playing around with it. I finished everything up. I added the social media links down here. And one thing I discovered while doing this just by chance um, is if you hold shift, you can do the margin and padding on all sides at the same time. And if you hold alt down, you can do it this way, uh, just like that. So it's only doing the top uh, the left and the right, or of course, if you do it here, it's only going to do the top and the bottom all together. So that makes life so much easier. Um, I accident I don't know why I did it with shift down. I did, and then I was pleasantly surprised and started experimenting a little bit. So uh, a nice little thing there. I oh, I also changed this. So I, I, I got rid of that broken thing where it was flying off the side. Um, I just made it so it's starting here since the opacity was already zero anyway. 
Uh, I thought that just made more sense. So it's also a lot less drastic. It was going a little too fast before. So uh, I don't think I'd actually use that on a site, but it's nice to know how easy it is to do that. And I want to explore this a little bit. I've already got an idea for something I want to try. Um, but we can see that it is working pretty good. I think like, for something, I never used this platform before, and I did this in about an hour and a half-ish. Um, and you know, it's my background image is shrinking down. We're getting all the different stuff. If I come down to here, I'd want to play with this a little bit more ideally. And like, you know, maybe I'd make, give myself more space, overlap the image on top at that screen size or something. Um, but we have that, maybe I'd increase my padding a little bit, um, and fix up some spacing. But overall, uh, I also didn't make these links, but whatever, uh, overall, I think it's looking pretty good. I'm going to share the link to this in the description below. If you do want to check it out. Uh, but the thing I'm most, most, most excited about is this, which is the export code. I've heard that it does an amazing job. So let's go look. Exports don't include native form functionality. That's fine. <laughs> um, so you can see here it's giving us, it looks really clean. Oh, look at that. Even my opening hours are on paragraphs. I want to check something really fast here. I'm, I was going to export this into VS Code and take a look there, but I can read it pretty simply. Can I make this bigger? No. Um, but overall I can see pretty good. It's giving all the classes that I gave things. And you might remember I put dots on some of them, uh, nav link. I put my dots on nav links and it's not doing it itself. I can't scroll sideways. Oh, I can. Okay. So yeah, it looks like, and I have a W nav link and my nav link. So this must be their, uh, anything I'm guessing prefixed with a W is the Webflow. So Webflow container, Webflow row, they have a column, but, uh, yeah, small, Webflow column, small, small stack. It makes sense. And all of that. Cool. So what I'm curious about is in some places, oh no, I did change. I switched things out for paragraphs. I also have a div closed div here because that's where I brought in a, a text block instead of a paragraph. And then I deleted my text, but obviously I didn't delete that text block. So the, a little left over there, but um, this actually looks like HTML that might be written by a human, which is pretty impressive. Uh, overall. So I'm super happy with that. Everything, it's really clean actually. <laughs> There's no weird gibberish classes and strange stuff. Let's go look at the CSS actually. I mean, overall, I'm, so, I'm sort of surprised they're not using the background, uh, the shorthand for some of the things here. Like obviously margin, you know, we could, uh, do we even need that? I'm not sure. I might've explicitly said it. So it was doing that some display flexes coming on stuff. I did that for all my columns. Whoops. Uh, ah, okay. Column and then column two. This is one thing I was curious about was how, if I didn't give something a class, like I'm guessing it'd be near the bottom. I didn't give everything a class opening hour. That's okay. So if I gave it a class, it just did it explicitly. But if I didn't select field, oh yeah, that's where I played around with that a little bit. I fixed it to make it go back to normal. Um, it seems to just prepend bottom like text blocks two, and I had a text block one at another part or heading four. Um, cause I had, this is my H2. This was my H2. I'm pretty sure, uh, that's all the way down at the bottom of my page. And I didn't, I changed the color of it, but I never gave it a class. And I was curious how it would treat that. So I was like, is it just going to inline the style? which is usually what you'd expect from a website builder like that. So the fact that it didn't inline the style, that it's actually just adding its own class that's sort of behind the scenes is kind of cool. I like that. Uh, and then here we have media query and all the stuff for the media query and then my other media query right there. Cool. Oh, I thought they were doing mobile first, but they're doing max widths on stuff. That's all right though. It's still, it's working really, really well. So oh, actually in a way that makes sense to use the max width the way they're doing it. Cool. So then I could just prepare zip and download all of that. The JS, I probably don't want to look at. <laughs> it's just their own stuff going on there. Uh, the assets I'm guessing is my images. Yep. There's the images that I used. Cool. Actually, that's it. I'm going to download this. Let's just take a look at what it actually gives us. So that looks pretty clean. <laughs> uh, JS has that images. will have all my images, including a fav icon. Oh my goodness. Look at that. Oh, no way. Remember it warned us that it was bringing in an image that was really big. Can I get the, oh, it's compressed. I don't know if I can open them, but it looks like it's, it's come up with different, it's, I have to go check that out in a second in the HTML then. Uh, actually, so I'm going to come back in a second where I are going to open up this in VS code. 
All right, so what I wanted to see here, the reason I wanted to open it up is where those images were. Where's my image for my hero? Why? That's curious though. Oh, here it is. Ah, it does. That's awesome. Uh, let's just turn word wrap off for a second or on, I should say. So on my image, it's actually coming in with a source set. So it might really nice. I just downloaded from Unsplash, obviously. Uh, so it's coming up with a different resolution of images and it's automatically uh, doing a source set on that to have higher or bigger versions of my image for the bigger screen sizes. That is nice. The That's automated. That's really, really awesome. Cool. And what did it do for my logo? Because I just dragged that in as an SVG. Uh, Logo.svg. Cool, cool, cool. That's really nice. Um, but it didn't do it for the little PNG icons at the bottom, which you wouldn't expect it to. Hmm. I wonder how it decides what points to um, put in there. So that's that's a nice little bonus that I really wasn't expecting in there. Cool. So you can see it looks really clean. I mean, the, there's the form that's a little bit messy right now just because there was no spacing in there. But um, everything looks super clean in here. There are a few parts actually, I did it on purpose. I'm curious, I don't remember where it was, where I hit enter a few times to create extra spacing. Oh, there we go, it did do BRBR. So you do have to be careful when you're bringing in text. If you want separate paragraphs, you actually have to bring in separate paragraph elements. I wasn't sure if it would be smart and break those apart, but no, it's just adding in some BR. So good to know. Uh, but overall, like the how clean this code is, I'm really, really, really impressed by. Um, we saw the CSS already, but we can go take another quick look. But yeah, really, I think that's pretty awesome. And there you go, that is what I could do with Webflow. I must say, in the short amount of time I spent on that with a platform I've never used before, pleasantly surprised with how it turned out. Um, I'm not ready to give my full opinion on the platform yet. I do think there are some limitations to it, but I also, as I said, never looked at a tutorial or never looked into things. So I think a few of the problems I ran into, I wanna see if there's actually solutions to them. Um, there's a few other things that I haven't tried yet that I'd like to give it a try. So I'm going to off screen um, over the next week, dive in, give it a little bit more, see what I can actually do with it. And then I'll come up with a more thorough, just this is really what I think about Webflow. But as my first time using it, I was, it was better than I expected it to be, to be honest. And that code export, honestly, I, I, that is writing better HTML and CSS than a lot of people I know. Uh, and usually these computers just make a mess of things. Uh, they get it to work, but it's it's almost, it's just so much stuff. And the, you can't, it's not code you can go in as a human and modify. It's coming in with readable class names. Really cool. Really, I like the idea of how it works. Um, and the fact that it makes exportable code that you could use is really, really cool and handy. It's going to be something that I'm going to explore a bit more because I have a few ideas that I want to look at. And I'll go over those in the next video uh, next time I take a look at it. Uh, so I'd like to know, what, what do you have you ever used Webflow? What are your experiences with it? If you have, if you've never used it, would you consider using it now? Or do you still think, you know, it's not exactly what you need or what you'd be interested in and code is the only way to go? I'd love to know your opinion on it. Leave it down in the comments below. A huge thank you to Webflow for supporting this channel through this video and being brave enough to just let me try it out and see what I thought of it. Big thank you to my patrons for helping support this channel as well. You guys are amazing. And of course, until next time, don't forget to make your corner of the internet just a little bit more awesome.